the strength to rise from the ashes and make a new beginning. Anyone can feel the ache. You think it's more than you can take, but you're stronger, stronger than you know. Don't you give up now. The sun will soon be shining. You gotta face the clouds to find the silver lining. I've seen dreams that move the mountains. Hope that doesn't ever end, even when the sky is falling. I've seen miracles just happen. Silent prayers get answered. Broken hearts. Come brand new. That's what faith can do. Good morning, church. What a privilege it is to be able to be here again this morning and to be able to share God's word with you. Um, and before we get going, let's uh, open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you that we are alive today. We want to thank you that we have air in our lungs. Father, we also just want to thank you that we can have a relationship with you, that you have made a way for us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just pray that you may just um, bless this word this morning. I pray that you may challenge us. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you may be glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What would you do if you had to see Jesus face to face right now? What would you do if you saw him hungry? What if you saw him thirsty? What if you saw him as a stranger or would you welcome him? What if he is naked? What if he is sick or in prison? What would you do? I'm pretty sure that if it was Jesus, you would pull out all the stops. Here's another question for you. How many of you have ever been given some advice when applying for a job? Often, what you put down on your CV is not as nearly as important as how it is put down. Most professionals look for professional-looking CVs. And if you get an interview, often the answers you give will not nearly be as important as the way you give them. The air of honesty, the integrity about you, the impression that you give how you have dressed, and your appearance. Whenever you apply for a new job, there's always a sense of expectancy as you wait to find out what they thought of your application. In any hiring process, many of those applying and expecting to get the job never get it because there's only one position available. And there are many applications that get thrown out. In the same way, when we consider going to heaven, we need to remember that not everyone who is wanting to go to heaven is going to get into heaven. Many will say on the day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons, perform many miracles? Then Jesus will say plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. I think that's one of the scariest verses in the Bible. Um, And there are many people who are, are banking on coming to church on a Sunday as their ticket. 
Many people, it's about giving money to the church. Many people, it's about being good, having a moral lifestyle. And by doing all these things, they think that they're going to get into heaven. It's not about the things that we do. It's about our relationship with Jesus. And do you have a relationship with Him? And I'm not asking, have you prayed a prayer? Do you have a relationship? Do you spend time in God's Word? Do you spend time with Jesus for who He is, not for what He's done in providing a job or healing you? Um, obviously, we have a relationship with Him because of what He's done in dying on the cross for us. I'm asking about, do you have a relationship is Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life? The book of James tells us about the difference of faith and works. James says, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I'll show you my faith by what I do. Our faith is truly shown by our action. And that brings us to the title of today's message, Faith in Action. And our passage is going to be in Matthew 25. But before we get there, we see in Matthew 24, the Lord will come as a thief in the night. We don't know when he's going to come. And then in, verse, in chapter 25, we're told that... We're told about the parable of the ten virgins. And the message that's brought across there is that we need to be ready. Because again, we don't know when the bridegroom is going to come. And then in, later on in chapter 25, we're told about the parable of the talents. And we're told about that we should be working But in the passage that we find ourselves this morning, in Matthew 25 from verse 31, Jesus tells us that we need to take care of others in the parable of the sheep and the goats. So let's read together. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on the right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you. And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison 
and did not minister to you? Then he'll answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to, to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. I think our passage gives us a, a stern warning that our faith needs to have action. It calls us to action. There is going to be a day of reckoning. There's going to be a day when our Savior is going to come. And yes, He's coming as Savior, but He's also coming as Judge. And He's going to stand and all the nations are going to be gathered. And He's going to separate the people like a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And the passage tells us that the sheep's going to be on the right and the goats are going to be on the left. And we know that the place on the right is that of honor. The place on the left, there's no honor. Some people may even look at this portion of Scripture and say that there may be a chance that if you do these good things, that you may inherit eternal life. But I don't think that's what that passage is saying. And I, we can't just take this passage by itself. We've got to, in context, we've got to take the whole Bible and see what it says. Because otherwise, if we take it out of context, then we're going to have a, a wrong theology, a wrong idea of salvation. So there is a portion in here that gives us the idea that those people are saved and it's when Jesus says, those who are blessed by my Father. I believe that that gives us an indication that there is a relationship between us and the Father. But like I said, we can't just take this passage and isolate it. We need to see what other portions of Scripture have to say. Read with me in, in John 3, verse 3 to 6. And Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Romans 10 verse 9 and 11, Because if you confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is just justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. What about Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 10? For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So we can see that we need to have a relationship with Jesus. And this isn't our own work. We aren't doing things in order to earn our salvation or receive favor from the Lord. 
In the passage we read in Ephesians, it tells us that we're saved by grace through faith alone. Salvation is a gift from God and it's a work of the Holy Spirit. So we need to be born again. We have to be born again. Have you given your life to the Lord? And is that all? What are you doing for the kingdom? What are you doing for the Lord? Listen to what James writes in chapter 2 verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well. Keep warm and well fed but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. How do we know a grapevine or a, an apple tree or a, an orange tree? We know it by its fruit. What fruits are you producing in the kingdom? Or are you no different from everyone else? Christianity isn't about just coming to church to make you feel good. So we can hear a message and not change. So we can just tick a box and ease our conscience. If that's your view of Christianity, it's wrong. Christianity is about relationship. Primarily relationship with God and, and with Jesus, but it's also about relationship and fellowship with fellow brothers and sisters. So what are you doing? What are you doing for the kingdom? What are you doing in the kingdom? It is now time to show your faith in action. It's time for us to get off our butts from these chairs on a Sunday and get out there into the kingdom and do things for the kingdom. We need to show the love of Jesus to those who are around us. The other day I was chatting to a Muslim friend. And I was telling him about this organization that we have called Bridge the Gap. Where we feed between seven and eight hundred people on a weekly basis. And I was telling him about what we do, that we give them some soup, we give them some bread, we, um, we give them a, a, like a food hamper to take home, uh, we give them some clothes. And he was, he was like, well, wow, that's great. You know Roshni, just up the road, they feed a thousand people on a daily basis. A thousand people on a daily basis. Their motive is wrong. They're doing that in order to earn their salvation. Yet we aren't willing to get off our butts and show the love of Jesus. We have an opportunity to show our faith by the things that we do and not try and earn our salvation by the things that we do. We've already been saved. 
You've been saved by the blood of Jesus. And we're going to celebrate that now. Listen to, listen to this. The love of Jesus, the love of God should compel us to love our brothers and love our sisters. Before that, let me ask you a question. How many of you love God? Raise your hand. Do you love God? Of course you do. I'm glad you do. But why don't you love your brothers? Why don't you love your sisters? 1 John 3 verse 14. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love our brothers. And then in verse 16, by this we know love, that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and truth. Yes, church, this is a challenge, but it's also a rebuke. Because we've been so comfortable sitting in church on a Sunday, just feeding ourselves and not putting our faith into action. So I'm going to ask you those questions that I asked in the beginning. What would you do if you saw Jesus face to face? What would you do if you saw him hungry, if you saw him thirsty, if you saw him naked, if you saw him sick or in prison, what would you do? I bet you you would give him the clothes that are on your back. I bet you would give him a warm meal. And in our passage this morning that we read in Matthew, it tells us that as you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. That's our challenge, church. That's our challenge. Our challenge is to be meeting the needs of those around us. And that's our call, faith to action. We need to get out there. We need to be showing the love of Jesus to those that are in the community. And we have those that are in need in our community, on our doorstep. How many of you even know that we have a ministry called Bridge the Gap? We, like I mentioned earlier, we have between seven to eight hundred people that come on a weekly basis to get a meal. And I can tell you now, for majority of them, it's the only meal that they get for the day. So how can you get involved? How can you get involved? Every single one of us has time. You can give of your time where you can come and help us on a Monday from 8.30, where we start getting the soup ready, we start getting the hampers ready. Then we hand everything out on a Tuesday. Maybe you can't help on a Monday, but you can help on a Tuesday. And we give out the soup and the bread, and we give out the hampers. Some of you aren't fortunate enough to be able to give of your time. But you have resources. You can give financially. You know it costs around seven, eight thousand rand to feed these people on a weekly basis. 
It's one of our biggest needs is finances. I'm pretty sure that all of you have old clothes in your cupboard. So that's a challenge for you as well. Go home and go through your cupboard and clear out all your old clothes because there's, there's people here who have nothing. They have nothing. Let's put our faith into action. Let's show the love of Jesus. The challenge is there for us to put our faith into action, to show the love of Jesus. We've got a ministry here at the church, Bridge the Gap, where we meet the need of our community. And as we, as we close off this morning, We've spoken about the challenge. We have seen what Jesus has done for us. And that brings us to the elements. Jesus laid down his life for you and for me. And on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and he, and he broke it and he said that every time you eat, of this you need to remember me and he also took the cup the wine and he said this is a symbol of the new covenant and he said drink this in remembrance of me so if you've got the elements with you please take of the bread and drink of the the grape juice or whatever it is that you've got with you and do this in remembrance of what Jesus has done for us. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this morning. We want to thank you that you have given us your word. Father, please forgive us for the times that we have just become complacent, where we've become comfortable in our own little kingdom, in our own little bubble. But Lord, there's a need out there. And you have called us as your church, your body, to be your hands and your feet, to go out and to be a shining light, to go out and show your love to those who are around us. So the challenge for us this morning is to put our faith into action. And Lord, we want to thank you for this ministry of Bridge the Gap. I pray that you may continue to provide for this need. I pray that you may continue to provide people or volunteers to come and help out on a weekly basis. I pray that you may continue to provide finances for this ministry, Lord. But most importantly, I pray that we may not just sit and just feed ourselves, but that we may be able to put our faith into action. In Jesus' name, amen.